Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Liz. Hey, Liz. How's it going today? Good. How are you? I am very good. I'm excited for us to record this episode. So uh, listeners, uh, we have got Liz on the show today. Liz is an Academy member. She is coming on. She is actually the first Academy member to come on and tell her fitness story. So I'm pretty excited. And there's also um, a reason that um, I wanted you to be the first person to come on because your story is amazing. Um, I know obviously bits of it. And, uh, you know, we have a we have a relationship that goes back over the last eight years. Um, but I know that that story for you and that journey goes way further than that. So obviously I'm privy to some of it. So what I wanted to do is have you on and talk and just kind of share a little bit more about that. So I'd love to hear, I'd love you to start with the pre, pre-knowing pre Gareth and uh, the Knock Academy and everything else in between. And go back to kind of like, I guess, your earliest memories of activity and fitness and health as a kid and kind of where your journey started with that stuff. Well, I'm honored to be the first guest. So thank you for that. Um, that's a shocker, but okay. <laughs> Um, so young Liz, let's see, um, growing up, fitness wasn't a big thing in my household. So European family work, work, work was the concept of everything. So heavy lifting included like moving cinder blocks. Cause that was, <laughs> that was working to my parents. Oh. So going, going to like gyms, stuff like that. It was a waste of time in my parents' eyes. So I didn't really have a good growth that way of like hands-on gym workouts and stuff like that it was always like well if you're working and you're working hard then you're working out so from a young age we'd be like moving blocks moving bricks helping <laughs> mix cement so it was a tough childhood that way but <laughs> I think it helped to contribute to some of my strength deep down but um gym wise we weren't ever really educated on fitness and staying fit that way and um and growing up was more, like I said, hands-on work. And that's what my parents believed were, was working. Joined the gym a few times. It was like, why are you wasting your money? Why are you wasting your time? There's no need to work out if you're working hard. So that was their concept. And that's what I grew up with. Um, so it was, it's kind of confusing growing up with that and then be like, well, hard work doesn't really get you in shape because it's on the weekends. I go to school that there's nothing really going on. So I did join a few sports teams growing up. I was played volleyball, played baseball, played basketball. So I was always sporty anyways, um, but no support behind it. Cause again, it was always a, what a waste of time sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I still was drawn to sports and wanting to play stuff and stuff like that. So um, the only thing that my parents did make sure we did was dance. So in cultural dancing. So I had that as my cardio, um, but I'm not, I was, I was just lifting blocks from a young age. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you got the right balance though you had yeah. some cardio and some strength training i mean right. basically it's still what we're promoting now so yeah. you know, pretty pretty solid um it's a couple of interesting things i'd love to to dig into a little bit i definitely think there's this generational thing where it's the the exposure to activity and movement and this is something that i try and utilize although obviously you know our little one is exposed to fitness and working out, so to speak, you know, in, in what we refer to as this day and age, but just exposure to movement, right? Like doing those things, helping out with tasks and lifting heavy things and dancing and activity, let's call it as opposed to a structured workout is I think generationally that that's lots of people are going to resonate with that because lots of people grew up in a world where I didn't grow up with fitness. My dad, mum and dad didn't go to the gym. Like people didn't, well, some people did, but like bodybuilders went to the gym or it was dance classes, right? Jazzercise or whatever, you know, in the, in the 80s. So I think that's very common. And what happened was, is we maybe we didn't as kids need the exposure to the world of health and fitness because we had exposure to movement. Then what I think happens though, and I'd love to hear your take on this is because we are, it's everyday life. Our lifestyle is active. Then as a, we get to a teenager and an adult is then we're thrown into this world of misinformation around health and fitness. So is that something you feel like you were, uh, that happened to you? Yeah, I think that has like, it's a big part of everybody's, a lot of people's lifestyle, right? Like it's, it's that whole, again, growing up in the generation I grew up in, work at home, hard work, 
don't need that. I mean, no internet to Google stuff anyways. Um, <laughs> so it's like, you don't need that. So you, you learn that, right? Like it's something it's learned. It's like, okay, no, I don't need it. And then you see the gyms opening. And you're like, oh, I should go to the gym because everybody around me is going to the gym. And you're like, what is this gym? <laughs> And you go and you attend and you're like, oh, I can't do anything. I don't know anything. And I'm, I look like a fool. So it's, it's one of those things where I think it's hard to um, kind of get into a structured like workout growing up with that unstructured just movement. And again, like you're saying, the movement pattern is great because you are bending, you're lifting, you're squatting, you're doing everything, but you don't even realize it. You just think that you're working so then when you look at the gym aspect of it you're like I'm gonna look like a fool lifting anything and most people are you know self-conscious and they walk in they're like I don't want to look at fool and they walk right back out right um so I think that's <laughs> misguided information no no information I think it is more than anything right yeah yeah for sure and it, it's so you know it's the same for me like i you know that's kind of part and i never really think about that too much but part of my journey as well and many people that you know i get to get to surround myself with the same thing you just you're thrown into that world and then nobody feels confident and there's not a there's not an entry point that's accessible enough for everybody and and you know maybe now i think when we look at the world of health and fitness i'm seeing a lot more people being able to educate their children and being able to expose them to different things and because it would have been you know for every anyone's fitness journey if you'd continued on that path as what you did as a kid and you and then i'm sure you do do those things but we just typically do less like you said we're in school and then things take over and we get a job and then the activity that general activity goes down because there's plenty of people i have friends that are like you know, I grew up with a couple of friends and they kind of were like in laboring and then, you know, very manual labor stuff. Things so they never stepped in a gym in their life, but they're in great shape because all they've done has been on their feet and moving. So they, they are moving more than they're not and they're utilizing their muscles. So it kind of comes back to just doing that, being active in some capacity. It doesn't mean everyone has to go to the gym and work out and, or, you know, work out online or whatever it might be. So I think that's a really important message that we see the gaps in our overall activity because we do nothing and then we get to this point where we're like all right well i guess i've just got to find the perfect workout to do and i'm going to do this and it's going to work and i'm going to do it for a few months and it's going to work but we've missed this gap where we've been active our whole life as a kid and it's funny we actually uh, recorded a show yesterday and we were talking about the um, activity guidelines of like 150 minutes a week of physical activity which easily you get as a kid it's like 20 minutes a day right and then as an adult 80 percent of the population is not getting that right now so it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a scary stat. I, I think, and I, again, it's that whole, it seems like a lot more is needed than is needed, right? Because it's that misguided information. It's that if I'm not doing a full hour workout and I've fallen victim to it too, especially with the change of work and all that stuff. It's like, well, if I'm, if I'm not doing at least an hour, or like 50 minutes, then really what's the, <laughs> what's the point, right? But really 15 minutes a day, is more than nothing, right? But it's so hard to actually make yourself believe that sometimes, right? It's that whole, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you feel like it's not worth it, it's, it's easy to talk yourself out of that, right? It's so yeah. simple. So, so obviously you went through as a kid, that was kind of your journey, like you said, you kind of went in and out of the gym and you know, it kind of started and stopped and there wasn't that confidence. So where, talk, talk to us a little bit about what, your first kind of experience of a gym environment was having never seen kind of anything of that typical structured exercise within that facility as a kid what was that first experience like for you gary <laughs> they didn't have cinder blocks lying around <laughs> no it was like real gym equipment you know what like i remember walking in like it was good life that i joined when i was probably around 18 or so um and I signed up, I went once and never walked back in again. Um, I think the time I went a little bit more is when I joined the Y. Again, walked in. Free weights are great because they're understandable. You can, like, you see them, you're okay, I'll lift them and that's it. You might not lift them right. Four might not be good, but they don't look awkward. Then you walk into machines and you're like, well, now I'm going to look like a fool if I'm bending like the wrong way. And I'm like, caught up in them so again it was one of those things that it's just like oh maybe not comfortable not for me sort of thing right and then it's the excuses that come up like i don't have time today i don't have time tomorrow oh i'll get to it and then it never happens right so my gym experiences prior to like several years ago was not very successful 
to that kind of stop and start nature, right? Yeah. So they kind of go for yeah. a little bit. And I think that's so many, you know, for many reasons, right? It could be motivation. Um, it could be that, you know, the, the, the fear of it, of doing, going in and doing something wrong or just feeling uncomfortable in that environment. And it people fall off. It's easy to say. It's easy when you exercise regularly to say, and especially as a fitness professional looking in a lot of the time, it's easy to look in and say, oh, well, you just go, just go and do it. Like do something, right? But so many people fall out of that. And then what happens is you tell yourself, oh, I've got to go to the gym and work out. I have to do this to be healthy and to be fit and to achieve my goal. Where, And then because you're not doing it, you just get in that mindset of beating yourself up and you do nothing as opposed to saying, Maybe the gym's not for me. I'll try walking 10,000 steps a day or I'll try doing a workout at home or getting an incredible app with all these workouts on it. Um, that's a quick plug for everyone. Um, yeah. if you missed it. <laughs> but there's all these options out there to do those things. But we convince ourselves, again, because of misguided information. So it's I yeah. think that's a really common thing that people will come up against. Now, how did that kind of stop and start mentality having come from an active childhood into your kind of teen years and you know into your 20s how did that start to affect or did it start to affect your health and your well-being you know mentally physically etc it just i think it more so it affected my pocketbook because then i ended up uh like i said i would join gyms never attend um i did start playing hockey when i was in my 20s so i found that's where i put all my time so i'd still get a gym membership and i never go but then i'd be like playing hockey so i'm like i know that i'm getting my exercise in that way and it's something I love to do so it was when you find that passion of something that you love to do I think that helps a lot too because I looked like a fool when I first started playing hockey um, but it didn't bother me at that point I was like I don't care because I love it so much right so um, the gym part of it didn't really turn me off forever obviously because then I went full out where it was like two three workouts a day um, but I think it was just one was it was the right time for me and two I think um I was ready to now hit the gym rather than just do the other activities. Like, I think you have to be ready to do something. Like we say that we're like, whether it be like quitting smoking, drinking, whatever, like we say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you can say it as many times as you want, but until you get that moment where you're like, I'm really ready now. I'm not doing it for like, I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my health and all that stuff, but I'm really ready now. So I think it's like it said, <laughs> growing up, it affected my pocketbook more than anything. Um, but I still found ways to be active. It's just, for me, the gym was not a place I found any, like, I, I never found it home until like seven, seven or eight years ago when I <laughs> met you. Right. Yeah. And I joined the gym and I was, but I was in that place where I was like, I have a goal. I need to hit my goal. And I gotta like do this. And I'm like, well, this makes sense. And this is where I feel comfortable now. Yeah. So what was the, uh, and maybe, maybe a better question is, was there a, was there a turning point for you? Like a, a pinpoint moment where, it, something flipped where you're like, I'm going to do this. And this time, you know, and that led to that consistency of getting you where you are now. Um, yeah, I was, I mean, I was working downtown. I was back um, for maternity leave for my second child um, where I was like 350 pounds. And I was like, Ooh, this is not a good example for myself, my girls, whatever. Right. So I've got, to, there's got to be some change. Um, and I kind of was lucky that way because I was working be close to two good lives. Um, and uh, a lot of my coworkers were going as well. So I had that little bit of, hey, on lunch, instead of like hanging out in the food court or just sitting at our desk and eating, why don't we just go to the gym? So it kind of started slowly that way. Um, and for a while, there was like a group of us that would go to the same classes and stuff like that. And it just, it helped because there's that little bit of support. Um, and it just was that environment that was building. Um, so that helped a lot. But I was also in the point where I was ready to go. Like I wanted to go. I wanted to be there. Yeah. But then I went totally extreme and i was like i said two or three times a day rather than <laughs> a week but you know uh -huh. yeah, all or nothing what, yeah right so when you when you figure out why it, you typically i think although some people are a bit more black and white than others I think most people when they I think when they're not black and white about something like their health and fitness is because they haven't really figured out why they want to do it or if they want to do it or how they're going to do it. And until you pinpoint it, right, I hear this all the time. People are like, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. I'm like, if you if that's truly the reason and that's why, you know, as a coach, we have to kind of motivationally interview and dig through the layers to figure out why you're really there. And it sounds like, you know, coming off of maternity leave and, you know, as you said, you gained gained a lot of weight up to 350 pounds is it sounds like there was a lot of motiv motivation geared around being a role model to your girls. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that was, I mean, you kind of want your kids to have obviously a better life, right? You know that too. It's like, you want them to be like, 
positive examples. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be hard times. Life is rough, but you want to be one of those models that it's like, hey, no matter what, like life throws at you, you can still kind of get through it. Like it's that positive, like you're going to deal with a bunch of crap in your life, but coming out on the other side of it. And you can always do that. Like you have to find a way, but you can kind of, you can make it. Like if you put your mind to it, like you can do it, right? Sort of thing. Yeah. So not protect them and be like all bubbly, but like, hey, I put myself into this position. I'm no one, no one put the weight on me. I did it myself. So what am I gonna do now to make myself healthy? So I'm around for my girls and to show as an example of, hey, it's tough. It's not easy at all, but you know, it's doable, right? Yeah, helps shows that it's resilient building, right? Like yeah. we we all can do that in so many different ways, and and being and having a reason to do that to be more resilient to achieve your goals and get to that point with you know whoever it is. But when there's a little person watching you, it becomes even more important. And so many people are geared around that, right? Like their purpose and their why in life, not just in their health and fitness, is is geared around their family and their and the legacy that's your family. It's such an yeah. important thing. And that could be that doesn't necessarily have to be your kids. That can be obviously widespreading across you know many people that are important to you, your family, and you know the family you choose as well as the family that you know you get so i think it's quite a spread um i always joke about that because i always think i think of my close friends as my family and, and so anyway um yeah it's it, there's something that re is really important that you mentioned and it was when you you made that decision but it took the decision to jump into that to start that exercising you know to go and get you know you mentioned the group fitness classes and the other people coming and i wonder how much of your sticking to that journey and achieving those goals was rooted in the community of people around you? Oh, I think it's 100% rooted to that. Like I said, I hate suffering alone. So having the group of people suffering with me, my happy place, right? Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> worst case, I've got this idiot up the front on the stage that's going to attempt to entertain me the whole way through. Right, exactly. Which, shocker for everybody listening, that was me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so but it's true like that community that you know and there's nothing more and i don't get to do it in the same way anymore but you know because the world's changed a lot and you know, everything else has changed you know where i've gone's changed but being up there and be able to help create that community and bring people together is is a buzz for someone teaching it and and we're going to hear a little bit more about that in a minute but and for the people participating but it, it's it's like the i always think as anything group based as the glue that kind of sticks it together sometimes and kind of keeps you there but keeps you coming back right because you're accountable to those people you know they're all coming in if you're not doing the workout and they are they're talking about it in the office you all want to go together so i think that's it's so important such an important message and it is what we're all about at, at the knock academy so um you know community is a huge part of that so yeah then i was gonna say it's not even it's not even sorry to cut you off but it's not even it grows then, right? Like you start with a few people that you know. And I remember going to the gym and it was like, oh my God, you were here last week. What happened? You're like, sorry, I was on vacation. Like, sorry. And it was like, oh my God, you look so good. Like, like just stuff like that. It was nice to hear from strangers that you'd like, me in a change room awkward as it is. And you're like an Italian, you're like, mm. <laughs> but let's have a full on conversation now, right? But the community grows and it does, it sparks that little bit more flame in you too, right? Cause you're like, okay. There's more people that are like here with me. I, I like I have my my people, right? Almost like, and it's like, okay, it's gonna be a really bad day. I'm not gonna want to move, but everybody's having a bad day, so let's move together, sort of thing, right? You know what I mean? Like it's that whole extra yeah. mentality or extra push. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's true. It does just grow into that. And as like you said, that always makes me laugh. The awkward conversations, yeah, and even more awkward when you're the instructor and everyone's having those conversations <laughs> with you. But so many people that just like you said, come up to you, where were you last week? And you're like, uh, who are you? <laughs> oh, you're the person that stands over in the right side of the room. Yeah, um, but it happens across, and that even happens just within the gym environment too, right? Like it's just even just seeing someone that works out at the same time as day as you or whatever it might be. Like it spans across that that whole community. And and although that's been a real struggle for a lot of us over the last, you know couple of years with the, the world changing and um and and covid and everything that came with it is that it's trying to find those ways to still do that and expand that community and bring other people into it and and still have that accountability of seeing those same faces showing up so so important now at this point you came in you were doing the classes in the gym obviously everyone's kind of figured out that that's how we, we met now this was eight years ago approximately seven eight years ago and then I guess you kind of were, were going to your classes, as you said, and you were building that community. What was kind of the next thing that happened in your journey? And, and where were you in your process of achieving your goals at that point? Um, so 
yeah, so I was doing the following of Nikki and Gareth, I'll be honest, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> instructors um so yeah I was doing the um the different classes I remember combat was one of my favorites so that was also an, another draw in right like easy to get to easy to do um but I still wasn't uh where I wanted to be I was getting fitter I was you know I was having fun and I remember you being on stage and you're like talking about team training and I remember coming up to you afterwards I'm like okay I'm interested like how do I do this team training thing <laughs> <laughs> like what is this all about um and I remember basically like the conversations is still in my head it's like oh we'll start after March break and I'm like no I need to start now in my head I'm thinking because if I don't start now I'm never going to start like it's just like come on I'm ready to go now like we got to do it now it's like okay so uh so yeah I remember talking about the team training and then you had the trials that you were doing and then came out the one day and I was like okay I'm just gonna sign up right away because if I don't <laughs> again it's not gonna happen Yep. so it's my accountability right like let me sign up and I'll do your free trial anyways but I'm hooked <laughs> and then it was eight years ago and never since <laughs> yeah so the the power of group again right like yeah the, you know group group based classes whatever it is you might yeah. do and then you know coming to an environment working out in a small group which yeah. I think is the is that is that kind of missing component right like that a little bit more individual you know dialing a little bit more on what you need and because this is what we don't get you know and even the best group fitness coaches out there can coach a certain amount in a big group but you know we were talking about classes here where there were 60 70 maybe even 80 people in there at once like I, i'm a good coach but 80 people trying to coach 80 people is still pretty challenging <laughs> so you get a little bit of that right and i think it's important is that you dialed into a connection right like a style of coaching or a personality and you went yeah this is something i want to do and this is where people sometimes look for coaches in any capacity and they'll go with someone that's recommended which is obviously a great way to do it or they'll go with someone that they think i don't know looks good or has got great content on social media which is awesome because this starts you in the direction but we've always got to think about who are you connected to who do you had that connection with right like a you know a sense of humor connection and you know somebody that's maybe empathetic to you know your goals and where you want to be and it, there has to be this ability to talk and communicate and I always say this to everyone all the time. People always ask me, you know, why should we come train with you? And I'm like, because we, we do what we want to do. We do what we do. And it's not massively different. I mean, the world of fitness is, is we're all working off of the same principles and the same facts. However, the way in which we do it and we communicate and the way we do things. So I say, just come try it out. See if you like us. Because if you don't, that's okay. And if you do, hang around because you can have an awesome time. Yeah. So I think that's a really important thing that you did that many people don't pay enough attention to. They pay too much attention to the goals that the the other people are achieving because it worked for someone else, it will work for me, which is not always the case. And this is obviously the reason why we're doing these audio style kind of journeys and testimonials because it's so important to dig a little deeper under the surface. So that's super important. Yeah, and I was gonna say like you, both you and Nikki made it really easy because you're so engaging um, and you do draw people in and you're so positive. So that, that helps a lot, <laughs> right? And it's that, but you're real. And that's the difference. It's not like you have those people that are like, oh yeah, I can train you. I'm like, I can get you this fit. I can get you like those empty promises. Like it wasn't anything about that. It was kind of like basically train, be healthy, have fun, do what you want to do. That's going to make you happy or activities that are going to make you happy, right? Like if you're, and you've said it so many times, if you don't like sitting on a bike, why are you taking a spin class? Right? Like if you don't like running, why? Like there's other ways to do cardio, like burpees, endless burpees, right? Like <laughs> Endless, endless burpees. So there's always that. And I think that's what helped me. Cause it was like, it wasn't, you guys never made it like it was like a sales pitch and like come to my classes and all that stuff. Right. It was like, this is, this is just us. And this is how we are. We're here for you. If you have any questions, if, if you need anything, like we're here. Right. Um, and do what you enjoy. Cause as long as you do something you're enjoying, you're going to be healthy. Like, it's not like you have to do with this, this, this to, to get this perfect bod. Like it was never about that. It was kind of like, you are who you are. What are you going to do that? is going to get you going to the gym. What are you going to do that's going to keep you active? What are you going to do that you're going to be happy with? Not like what Gareth and Nikki are going to be happy with, but what are you going to do as yourself to be happy, right? Like, and that's exactly it. Like avoid cardio. Love that idea. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No purpose. No purpose. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll be able to avoid them to a point. And then yes. You need to do some. Um, we just hence, call them squats and yeah. step back. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Squat to plank. 
Yeah. There you go. It's just a little <laughs> jump on the end. Um, yeah. Yes, burpees. There's always some burpees in there. I like burpees, but let's just, that's for the record, say they are massively overused um, in the most part. <laughs> that's what I say. No. <laughs> um, Liz would definitely agree with that. <laughs> So then this, this journey started. So we worked yeah. together. We went through, you know, small group based training. We continue, continue to do your classes. And then obviously this went on over many, many years. What did your, what did your, what did you achieve in that period of time? Like share a little bit about what you achieved. And I'd love to hear the kind of physical achievements, but also the, the mental achievements and kind of the overall health achievements. Yeah, um, definitely. So um, one of my goals was to, be an officer, which I'm not yet, but it's still gonna happen. <laughs> but I have to do the uh, prep test, which through training, I found that uh, from what I, no, I wasn't able to be able to do. Um, at one point I was able to pass the fitness part of it. However, I didn't apply and wasted that opportunity. But uh, <laughs> I did actually get to the point where I had lost, I wanna say 150 pounds. So in total, um, and just I just pause one second, 150 <laughs> pounds that just blows my mind still, um, how incredible that is. And I think it's important to note that there was a lot of, in this process, a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment and yeah, obviously you came into a community and, you know, I, I did my best to support you on that, but that's an incredible achievement for anyone. So round of applause, continue. And I, you know what, and I always say, I don't even think it's the weight loss that impressed me so much. It was that the toning and the strength that I gained, right? Like it's, it's that part of it. So yeah, weight is important. Weight is very important, but I think this ideal goal weight, um, I lost that, man, like that thought a long time ago that oh, I have to be 120 pounds to be healthy. Sorry, that's bullshit to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so because if I can run and, and run like 5k and keep up and I'm maybe not 120 pounds, about 200, but Hey, that's my body style. That's, that's what I am. I'm happy with it. Right. Um, so just that strength and that, um, that, like, I remember the first finish in the first boot, boot camp, and I probably have it written down somewhere still, um, probably very easy to access to of like losing tons of inches already in like 12 weeks. Right. And again, yeah, it was me doing it. Cause I had to push through and do it and, you know, changed my eating, um, changed a lot of different habits and just kept on working out and sticking with it. Um, I already noticed in like 12 weeks, how big of a difference that made. Right. So mentally already was in a different spot. Cause it's like, wow, I can do it. Right. Like I've let myself go to this point where I'm not happy with myself. And I'm like, how did I let myself get that far? And then you're like, okay, that forget about that. I did that. That was dumb you know, whatever, but now I'm now progressing and I'm moving the other way. And it's like, wow, I can do this. Like it is achievable. It's something I can do. So, yeah. So I, like, I, I did my prep test. I did the whole shuttle run past all that. So that was my, that's my goal of like fitness. Cause I have to press the, pass the prep test. Right. So it's that shuttle run, the running, and I hate running. Like, let's just put it out there. Like I will, I will do burpees over running <laughs> and I hate burpees. Yeah. So, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I did that and, and that was, that was great. Um, but then I think I also realized how strong I was. So I think that was something that I kind of started to focus on as well. Cause I have, I think one of my big issues is I like to follow on or do multiple things at once. Like I, I have a hard time focusing on one goal at a time. So it's like, Ooh, <laughs> I want to do this. I want to do this. Oh, squirrel. Let's go over here. So <laughs> I started uh, lifting weights and again, that was a big accomplishment for me too, because I realized how strong I was. And, and for me, again, health is part of like strength for me is healthy. Right. So um, again, idea body types, great for some people, for me, it's, I accept who I am and how I am. I'm not going to be like that thin, thin scale person. And I'm okay with that, but I like to be strong. So when I was, uh, I started competing in uh, powerlifting. So I was, one of my highlights is setting my, uh, the record for my age and weight class, which was a proud moment for me. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's what I like to do. Like, those are things that um, keep me going. And, and those are the, what, I, what I've come out with on the end of like our training together and everything. Cause I remember even um, like with her, with our training, um, when we switched to doing like that whole one day strength, one day cardio, right. Or the, the balance that way and yeah Wednesdays I loved coming in because it was like yay I can lift heavy things <laughs> how much heavy can I lift right <laughs> and then it was like oh I have to like 
high knee run on Friday. <laughs> I still remember that, like 7 a.m. And it would be Wednesday and there's a coming and the barbells would be out and there'd be, and she'd be like, and the face would light up. Like, straight over, start pulling the 45 pound plates off the rail. Like, yeah, let's go. Let's do some deadlifts. And then it's like Friday, it's like, ugh, you hate this. Dragging, your, like, dragging yourself in at five past seven. Like, yeah. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah, train was late. <laughs> train was late again on a Friday. Always late on Fridays. Yeah, every Friday. Um, so so true, and and yeah. just another great achievement, and so good to recognise the those abilities, right? Like what we're meant to do, and you know, we'd always have a good laugh, and um, it would always have a good laugh, and get Liz to demonstrate some of the exercises, um, and then laugh about how you could lift more than me. Um, <laughs> Which is always good, good entertainment for everyone else. And you can do more burpees and like high knee runs were your thing, jumping. Yeah. <laughs> jumping, I'm pretty good at deadlift, not so much. Um, it's so, so great to hear that, that, that combination, right? Of things like the weight loss and the, the strength gain and then moving into those other cool things. So I, I love yeah. hearing that. So where, where from there, like the, you know, powerlifting competitions and then where did that journey continue? I think we've probably got a few years left still. <laughs> Well, it was going well. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's a twist in the story. Yeah. Plot twist. <laughs> um, yeah, so everything was going well. Um, competed, and then um, job changes happened. So again, it was great working at one company. Didn't really monitor my lunch times. Took a little extra during lunch. It was great. Worked out a lot. <laughs> Moved to a new company. Stuck to the hour lunches, not a problem, still worked out twice a day. Uh, changed position in that company and slowly those workouts started dwindling. Um, then I did a whole career change and I started a whole new <laughs> um, job, not working downtown anymore. And it's with training for the new job and everything, I let everything kind of fall by the wayside, right? So you have kids that you're doing shift work, four days on, four days off, sleeping half the time, don't know when to sleep, don't know when to eat, don't know, like, it, it was just a whole mess. So um, leading me up to now where now I'm back or trying to get back to what I used to do. So again, find myself like seven years ago, kicking myself in the butt saying, how the hell could you let it go this far again? Not as far as before, but it's like, and now you fall into that position where you're like, oh, can I do it again? I think I can, right? So it's that whole build up again. So um, yeah, so my journey has been like a roller coaster, which is upsetting, but I think it's good. Cause again, it's that, uh, that fight, right? It's that, okay, hmm. I've let myself get to this point again where I'm gonna go to the gym and hmm, I used to be able to lift, deadlift like <laughs> three plates plus. And now I'm going to the gym and I'm like, Ooh, we'll just use the 35s on each end and <laughs> and try to get through this, right? Very, so, very sensible approach, though. <laughs> well, I tried more and it didn't work out too well, so I'm pulling it back a bit. You know, never said it was smart. Um, but yeah, just it, like it's such a, to me, it's like such a smack in the face. And I've done this to myself again because it's like, like I said, simple things like bench press. 200 pounds before I left and it was working out full, like it was great. Now I'm like, Ooh, 145. And I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> like, why is this so heavy? I know deep down, I crush my throat <laughs> with the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it. It's one of those things where it, it seems silly, but it's like, I lost so much. I'm like, how can I let myself get to this? And I know like there's excuses. Like I had my dad that was sick. We talked about this, like my kids are growing and all that stuff, but it's um, to me it's excuses, but it was real life too at the time. So now it's like, Hey, you know what? Again, I can't change what happened over the last year and a half, two years, but what I can change now is how I am right now, right? So it's getting that um, focus back on to where I need to be and why. That why again of why I want to work out, why I want to get healthy and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Rather than just being... Yeah, because we can tell ourselves what we need to do, what we what we have to do all the time, but what we really need to focus in is why we why we need to do it, right? Not yeah. just because we, you know, we, I, I'm oh, I need to work out. I like, we, you get to work out, you get this privilege of having a body that moves and does these things and accessibility. Like even over the last year and a half, where we've had COVID and we haven't been in the gyms, we've still had all these options, right? Hence the the progression of you know our business is 
we have options we get to work out because we do have digital technology and all these things it but it still doesn't change the fact that there's a million i mean you don't just go on and like you know go on youtube and type workout in there's a billion workouts on there people still aren't doing it right so because people aren't connected to that wire understanding the you know why they need to make it a priority and and sometimes it isn't a priority your story in point right like you've got family commitments things happening add covid on top of that as well where you know we were all our gym routine was given a big sharp kick out the door because we weren't able to get in and do anything and we had to adapt on in the moment and then not only that you paired that in with a career change that you'd only been into for a short period of time um which you know we will we'll dig into that if you feel comfortable but yeah. it's something that's so important and what's interesting is when you move away from a certain career I, what i would love to hear is how did that shift in your health and your well-being start to affect your other choices in your life for example suddenly i'm not going to do this job anymore i'm going to go do something else is there a is there a kind of deep correlation between those two things um like the choice of leaving where I was to where yeah. I am now. Um, well, where I am now is obviously a field I've always wanted to be in. So the policing field, right? So it's one of those things that I've always been passionate about. Um, prior, I was in mortgages. Very similar, 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 similar aspects, right? Super interesting. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> legal and mortgages to 911 communicator, identical jobs. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was something I've always wanted to get into. And I think I kind of fooled myself a bit too. Um, and I, I can kind of see through my history of like job choices and when I was progressing of where I wanted to end up and what I was trying to do. Um, I kind of sabotage myself as well. Sometimes I feel because it's like, Ooh, I'm going to take this job because it's more customer servicey, which will bring me closer to this goal. But then it also took me away from the other goal. And I was like super focused on something else. Right. And like I said before, I'm like, I get focused on too many things instead of getting one goal and like, Hey, let's get this down. And then it's like, yeah. I'm going to run. Okay. Squirrel, let's lift weights. Like I go to the gym and I'm like, it's going to be a good cardio workout. Ooh, dumbbells. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's just the way I am. Right. So I think like all these job progressions I did to get to that policing field, it was kind of one of those things like, Oh, I'll just do this. And it was like, well, now I have a little bit less time for working out. And now I'm going to focus on this. Right. And then it was the kind of like the steps, like stepping stones. Um, instead of just saying, Hey, you know what? I want to go for that final goal. Like screw what I want. I'm going to do in between to get me there. Like some of them um, and just work on this to get where I want to be. Like, instead of using those little baby steps sort of between. Um, so I think I kind of, every time I've done this, I've kind of had less time to do other things. Right. And I know we talked about this. There's lots of time and hours in the day. Um, but I think we just find less and less, right? Like we, we fill like, our time, right? We, yeah. We make sometimes up we do fill our time with priorities that other priorities away from that. And I think the, but the understanding of, you know, still being able to be active. Yeah. Right. You might not be deadlifting massive weights and setting records and what have you. However, still being able to be active, right. Still be yeah. that role model coming back to the why, like, is there other ways to do that and incorporate into your life? What I, what I love is that there's, and maybe I didn't articulate this question very well, but what I love is when you were able to achieve some goals and you mentioned how, you know, you kind of told yourself, yes, I can do this. I can see that, you know, the hard work's getting me results is then suddenly it kind of aligned with that mind shift of, Hey, you know what? I can go in and do my physical testing. Maybe I can move into a career in the police services, which you have, um, you know, and in whatever capacity it is, is, is that, is it a mindset shift that comes with that health and fitness? When you achieve goals, you're able to say, hey, yo, I can do this and maybe I can take a leap into something, right? Because that I think is something okay. that we don't see. I've never have I done a consultation and someone said, oh, I've come to, to the gym to work out uh, because I want to change my career. I need to change my mindset to, to be able to change a career. Like people don't come <laughs> in with that. Not that I've experienced. <laughs> I think you're in oh, the wrong place. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm a little different than everybody else. Come on. No. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but it, was, it lined up because I was like, oh, I was working out, working out, and I stopped working out as much. No. But yeah, no. <laughs> no, but the working out part of it and gaining the confidence that way changed my life fully because it was one of those things where it was like no con or very little confidence to um, not being as afraid to, and more confident. Like I even started instructing and stuff like that, not being afraid. Like for me, 
standing up in front of people talking I that's not my thing right like so I'm like the quiet person that goes into a party and just observes everybody like that's me right like I will people watch till the end of time so for confidence building I think the working out helped me out a lot because I just had more self-confidence in myself like I could do things um and again I know it's growing up again for me in a European family was like, well, you're a girl, you can't do those things. Like, that's a lot of like what I experienced. So on the flip side, when I'm doing them, I'm like, I can do them. (laughs) (laughs) What do you know? (laughs) Right? Yeah. I mean, I got flack from my parents. I still do. It's like, but why? Like, because I can. Um, But yeah, it's one of those things where it's like the confidence that built, um, that was built in the gym, I think resonated everywhere else too. Like just being able to like go to the police and being able to get a job within like that industry. Um, I, I was confident in myself to do that. Right. So, and I think if I would have tried to do that years before I started working out, it would have been a totally different outcome. Yeah. And I, I always love the, uh, I always love the, the, the fun exchanges that we'd have and your kind of personality and humor. And it's funny how I, I saw that early on in one-to-one conversations, but over the years, how I started to see that become just a staple in, in our group you yeah. know, and, and training with a group and, you know, having that fun and being able to have it and just in you, right? Like you grow in that confidence and you're able to share that, which I love because I always think it's hilarious. And then you're able to spread that out to everyone else and someone else that appreciates my sarcasm, which not everybody. Does. Um, <laughs> So, oh, wait, that's the only way we know how to speak. <laughs> Sarcasm is the only way to speak. <laughs> right? It's my first right? language. So I, I love that. And, it, it, you know, and it's, it, it, even if it's just you laughing, then I'm okay with that. Even if I ask, isn't isn't paying attention to my bad jokes. <laughs> So I, I love that, the, the confidence building in that progression. And you already touched on how that, you know, not only led to a career change, but also a, a side a side career, let's call it, in, in becoming a fitness instructor and, and teaching classes. How was that experience for the first time? You know, now everyone's heard your journey. What was that like the first time up on stage in front of paying members at a gym? Um, <laughs> very interesting. So... <laughs> It is definitely easier on the other side. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you know, when you're telling someone the left hand and it's the other left hand, like, it's just... <laughs> you're like, just how do I get through? <laughs> and you can't point out who it is that's doing it. Yeah. Well, I was always thinking it was me, but it was never me. But, you know, <laughs> um, no, it was, it was, it was good. And it was... Um, I think that came at a right time too, where I was confident in myself and I knew I was, I was at a point where I was fit and I was, again, not the typical body type. I want to say for like a lot of instructors are who you would think would be instructors. But for me, I was strong. And I know when I like on the, I was teaching Aquafit. Um, so even on deck, when I would do like jumps, I'm not supposed to be jumping, but like even like tuck jumps and stuff like that, everybody's like, wow, like, just uh, I did not expect that from her sort of thing, right? Or even like push-ups off my toes and they're like, what, you're strong. And I'm like, thanks, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, but I think it's just, there was a confidence where I was like, I came to a point where I was like, hey, I know I can do this. So I don't care. Like, if you're going to judge me when you walk in my class, by the time you leave, you're going to be like <laughs> a believer anyway. So I can't change your mind of what you're going to think on a perception. Right. And that's unfortunate, but when you leave, you'll be like, Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so I was, uh, it was hard because again, I'm not a public speaker. I don't like speaking in public. I don't like doing a lot of like, I'm usually very shy and reserved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. Oh, wow, it's true. <laughs> Sort of Maybe not settings. in the last eight years, but <laughs> new settings, <laughs> calm, quiet, and reserved. That's me. So, um, so yeah, so it was it was kind of hard uh, the first time, but again, I got through it. And then after the first time, I was like of teaching, I was like, oh, okay, I know where I need to improve. I know what I need to do. But it was like a good. I had <laughs> I had Nikki and Gareth in my head the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> say this do this do this so it was great so I had some good lines and it was like okay but it, it was great because I had that that good base to fall back on right um and like even key terms that I had been listening to like all these years that resonate right so it's kind of like and they're believable so um it's like you just catch phrases that are not not making people feel like they can't um 
they're not doing it right, um, how they can prove and stuff like that. And the why, like, why are you doing this? Like, it's like the last third, like, let's just say it's the last 30 seconds. Give me all you got sort of thing. Right. Rather than, Hey, we've been here for two hours. Like, that's all you got for me. Like, <laughs> Because there's, ne- there's, <laughs> there's the negative push that drives people to work harder, right, yeah. for some people. But then there's that positive end of it that I think goes a long way as well, um, depending on the person and how they train, right? Um, for sure. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point because, we, you know, I mentioned it earlier and it's something that, you know, resonates a lot with me is the the barrier to entry for people. And when we look at those people that, you know, I've spoke to so many people that have told me that it's their 10th time they've come to the gym and and after time 10, they actually got out of the car and walked in the door. Like they've sat in the parking lot. So there's this barrier to entry. And although there are those people that are extrinsically motivated, so we could motivate them with that, you know, you know, is that all you got? Give me five more, whatever. Or, you know, it's pushing them to something. Maybe, maybe it's a physical kind of extrinsic goal, something like that. But what we have to realize is those people, we don't have to fight to get those people in the gym and in a class or in an environment where they can work out. We're not fighting to get those people. They're already there. And they're going to be there anyway, even if I don't tell them that this is going to, you know, help them get their some bullshit cue, like get them the bikini body they want, whatever that might motivate them. I don't need to motivate that person. I need to get that person who's got a barrier. Right. So when we when we approach it from that way, like you said, is it helps us dial into the really important things, why we're doing it, why it's going to make you more successful, why it's going to make you more consistent and and open up the doors widen that entry point for those people that aren't there already because they're the people we're missing there's a massive percentage of the population that aren't doing stuff so yeah that that's such an important point and i love that that's come you know to light for you through through your journey so important yeah like when i first started to be honest before i started the boot camps i was like i need like a jillian michaels type of person like i need someone that's gonna be like you know (laughs) like that's the only way i'll train and then I joined obviously your boot camp and you're nothing like that, right? It's <laughs> like, like back over here. <laughs> it's kind of like the education part of it and the why, like this movement is gonna help this. So like it's that understanding more than the just do it sort of thing. And I've had that other side of it where I've had that kind of other trainers where I've gone to even afterwards or like two boot camps at once when I was training for the powerlifting competitions, and I was like. I do not want this type of trainer. Like this does not work with me. Oh, you, don't want to be, all, you don't want to be yelled at, no? Yeah, like all along when I even started, I was like, this is what I need. Like I need to like, I need someone to be like, break me down and like, like really like make me. And I'm like, whoa, no, I don't need that at all. Like, that's not me. Like <laughs> I get less results that way. So that's not what I need, but. Such a small percentage of people do need that. <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and that's great. But those people, like I said, anyone I've ever met that kind of needs that direction, they're already training and they're yeah. not really the people that we're trying to open the door for. Yeah. So if you're listening <laughs> to this and thinking, I might check out this North Academy thing, <laughs> don't expect it to get yelled at by either yeah. of us. Cause it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, that, like I said, it's a small percentage, right? But we want to try and we want to try and open up those, those entry points and bring those yeah. barriers down for people. But it's being, so but being in, in like, uneducated in that area and just seeing on tv because you have those shows biggest loser all that stuff and you're watching them and you're like don't even and you no, know, but like at that point that's where i was at right yep does that date me and how long we've been doing this for <laughs> yep <laughs> okay great so um but even watching that show because it was kind of big when i was like starting this kind of whole journey and it was like no you know i need someone to be like <laughs> like a drill sergeant and i was like like i said i came to your boot camp and you were no no drill sergeant at all. It was like, okay, we're going to get bent down to business. Like, this is what you're doing. Hmm. And it's like, well, I can't. And it's like, no, you can. Cause if you couldn't, I wouldn't be telling you to do it. So, you know, like I have faith in you. And I think that helps a lot too. Cause it's like, I know you can do it. So just believe in yourself that little bit, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. So, and then yeah, I was like, Ooh, and this is much better. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things out there, and I think the big message there is, like I said, sometimes it will work for people, but yeah. we what we what we really t- need to look at, I think, in the industry is the drop off rate for when people do approach it in that manner, and how people are, you know, they perceive it, what they perceive it to be, like yourself, and then the drop off rate at the end of that is generally really high. So what we're trying to look at is can we prevent the drop off rate by creating that inclusive space, that community, that accountability, whatever it is. So I think that's yeah. really, really important. 
and i love that you know it kind of took you to to this point in your journey like that's uh it's pretty there's some pretty impressive milestones like i said at the beginning i was excited to have the conversation because i'm obviously very fortunate to have heard a lot of this you know i've seen it i've had the one-to-one -one conversations the chats before training and everything else that comes with it and you know you know like you said there's there's a there's a new opportunity now for you to weave in this new this new schedule this new accessibility around you know what we're delivering you know online and however long i don't know the world kind of starts to figure itself out <laughs> although it's not doing a great job of that right now but yeah we're, we're getting there and you know we have a we have this platform that you're now obviously part of which we're, we're very grateful of um i'd love to um i'd love well first of all i'd love to say is there anything else you want to share about your journey um i think I would, I was actually going to bring up the fact that, uh, the friends that I've made through my journey as well. Right. Like we had a close knit, uh, group, I think even from our first, my first session with you, because the people I met in that session still friends with, um, obviously don't see each other as much anymore because of COVID. We see um, anymore. yeah. <laughs> so I'm on a screen. Yeah, exactly. So I just track them on Facebook, see what they're doing, see what they're up to, you know, stalking a bit though. No, um, but like, I made some really good friends and really key friendships through um the fitness journey as well as just being part of the, the like this fitness family right and i think the last group especially because we had a pretty big group like we always consider ourselves like a fit fam right like we would have like very healthy non-caloric cakes on people's birthdays <laughs> with coffee i'm no, kidding yeah. <laughs> no calorie um, free yeah calorie free <laughs> it was water no um but we we just had such a like a bond and i think um that's something that helps me through even though when i'm having that bad day like um one of the people i still i still will see now and we'll work out once in a while together and one of them i'm gonna be seeing tonight so there you go <laughs> we'll have a good workout together it's just that accountability there so that i built <clears throat> through all that, uh, through all the boot camps that I have been doing the group training and stuff like that, that I've been a part of. So I think that's such an important part of continuing the journey and getting back on that horse and getting back to, you know, where I want to be sort of thing. Right. Yeah, for sure. So. so, and I love that because, you know, like we said, community and accountability is, is a massive part of, I think, I think to some degree, everyone's journey, although it looks different for everybody, but you know, definitely what we're doing, what we do at the Knock Academy is about that. Like we're trying to find ways to leverage the, the online digital world and build those communities and have those people, those regular faces turn up and build those connections. So such an important kind of message to finish on. I like to uh, wrap up our, um, our episodes these these ongoing you know academy member episodes with asking you what your favorite exercise or if you don't want to be specific about an exercise your favorite type of workout is deadlifts, deadlifts. all day long <laughs> okay good i love that I, I can't wait to see the color i might start making a tally on my whiteboard of everything that people say so i love that deadlifts very very important exercise and a good test of your overall strength so good choice um listen i just want to thank you liz for being on the show and just thank you for being part of everything that i'm i'm doing we're doing and you know continuing on that journey trusting us with you know your health and fitness and guiding you and supporting you so and thank you for your time coming on the show and sharing because i think it makes a massive difference when we hear those stories and you know it's not just a it's not just a transformational picture that's posted on social media we actually get to hear that testimony and hear about where you've gone on your journey and the different things and how it's impacted your life so thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It was welcome. great. Um, listen, everyone. Also, thank you to for everyone who's listening, everyone who's tuned in. Uh, I hope you got something amazing from the episode. If you did, please share it with someone um, and help them along their journey. We'd really appreciate it. And head over to our Facebook page. If you go into the show notes of the show, you're going to see it right at the very top of the show notes. Jump into the Facebook group. Again, we're all about community. So we're building a community via the podcast. Jump in there answer some of the polls let us know what you want to hear more of on the show do you want to hear more amazing stories like liz's do you want to get some more short feedback episodes on health and fitness tips whatever it might be drop them in there because we are looking to build the content that you want to listen to so so important and on that note get out there get your activity and your movement in and we will see you on the next episode